Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GXC Accelerators. We're really, really excited to welcome you guys and kick off the Startup Accelerator Week. And then, all right, so let's get started. So as stated before, um, the GSC Global Accelerator is a three-month program to help you um, really scale your businesses and your ideas. And so with that said, as entrepreneurs, some of you are um, very far along in your companies um, who've been around for a couple of years, found traction, fund funding, and doing pretty well. Some of you are in your infant stages. Some of you are freelancers and still trying to figure things out. Um, our accelerator program, we try to um, accept you know, companies or potentials and founders with potential at different stages of their businesses, because we do believe that you guys can learn and grow from each other as well. This is why the biggest um, value proposition of GSC, in addition to the program itself and the speakers that come on, is really you guys, right? I've been monitoring the WhatsApp community threads and the um, Facebook community threads. You guys are on fire, sharing insights and information, sharing resources, sharing advice, sharing even on opportunities to meet up with each other. So it's really nice to see that. Please continue to do that because like I said, you guys are pretty much a family network as it stands. And so to give you guys again a brief on who we are, my name again is Christine and Tim. I'm the host for the um, 2019 Accelerator Program. For any alumni that's on the program, they already know this. Once you're part of the Accelerator um, community, you're pretty much a part of, of it for life. So even though Let's say next year your, your company progresses and you want access to the community, you still be able to come through the accelerated program as well. So I wear several different hats, but at GSC, as one of the partners of the GSC um, company, I manage the accelerators and the summits. Einstein is a managing partner of the Africa Future Fund. He focuses on funding and resources for um, companies that he invests across the continent. And so these are two different ways for you guys to connect with us. Welcome you guys to the GSC digital accelerator as a reminder gsc is the largest accelerator program on the planet with a thousand companies a year across 90 countries doing the program this year we received companies from 82 different countries so very very diverse group you guys are already aware of the fact that we work with a lot of different partners and of course we have seven regions that we really um really try to promote in this program some of you are part of the africa core some of you are part of the caribbean but you guys are coming from different countries and different regions already told you guys from last week during the accelerator program that the journey of GSC has not been easy it definitely has been a crazy journey from the first time during my pregnancy when I learned how to code in three weeks built my first site and then started off in 2016 with the first cohort with 500 companies following year transition into 700 companies and then to a thousand companies as of last year this year as well we've actually transitioned and have accepted a thousand companies previous since speakers and judges which you'll be meeting with um, over the course of the entire of the entire week have all different types of backgrounds and expertise and all of them will come online some of them will have video talks some of them will have powerpoint talks so each speaker has their expertise that they will be sharing with you during the course of the week and of course as we expanded, um, many of you um, who are part of the GSC community have demanded that we continue to engage you guys throughout the year. So now we have digital chapter meetups, all different topics are shared. And of course, I said this last week that we'll share with you opportunities for you to be a chapter leader if you're interested in leading a chapter in your community. So. I also want to stress again that not only do we have online accelerator programs, we also run these summits around the world. Some of you are in these countries that we're coming to, so we're excited to meet you guys in person this year. And as we expand to other summits in different regions around the world, hopefully we can continue to have pretty much GSC, what I call family reunions around the world together so we could catch up and meet up in person. Now, I want to transition now, now that you have an overview of GSC, again, that was a very quick recap because last week we already had the orientation. I want to focus now on 2019 announcements and updates because like I said, you guys are sending us a lot of inquiries and questions and comments about the program. So I just want to clarify a couple of things before we transition into the program. So wanted to again welcome all of you guys to the fourth annual GSC Digital Accelerator. Let's start with um, how to pilot, you know, even just like concept. And I always start with it just it starts with who you are as a person, um, because uh, prior to being a coder, 
I know there were a lot of jokes about, you know, non-technical founders when they're trying to find a, um, a technical lead. Um, it's always like, hey, you know, I'm looking for a technical founder and I have the idea, you do the work and build it. And yeah, that's all you do. And it used to get really frustrating when you have entrepreneurial founders trying to meet technical people to come together and something that it's a running joke within the startup community. Um, and there's so many different relationships where things go sour, where the entrepreneur doesn't give enough credit to the technical lead and the tech lead usually just doesn't respect the entrepreneur. And you see a lot of those things. So we need to start by understanding that everyone has an understanding of the technical needs of the business, but also understand the very basics. So that way, whether you're a technical or non-technical, you're able to find the right team members, but also for those who are technical, you're able to find the right business um, and team leads to work with you. And for those of you who are both, the lucky few of you who are both, um, understanding also how to build out a team around that as well. And so when looking for a developer, for those of you who are looking for someone to build your product or your app, um, this session is actually directed towards non-technical founders because I have a huge sympathy for people who have a great idea but just don't know how to build a website or an app or develop anything. And I wanted to start by sharing, like, there are different ways to find a developer and there are different types of developers that you can leverage. Um, so I'm going to talk about each path that you could take and then you figure out which one is best for you. The point is, is just making sure that we are aware of the different things that you could do to build your company and really engage people. So the first thing I will say is when it comes to people and product, think about, you know, you could also hire like an external freelancer. This is probably the fastest option. Find someone who has the skills to freelance and help you build a website or build a product. Unfortunately, this person may not be able to maintain it because they're not a full-time person. They just, you're hiring them to just do a job for a certain time period and that's it. And so who's going to handle the bugs and the issues with your app or your website? And every website has an issue. I mean, right now, our site just crashed because of all the traffic coming on. And we have a team dedicated to really trying to fix that. If we didn't have one, we just had a freelancer just build a site, we would just be stuck right now. Right. And so being aware of the fact that even though external freelancer is the fastest option, there's also the postback issues that might come with that. Another thing could be, yes, let's hire an outsource agency to do the entire solution, build something out, scale it and maintain it. Great. That's a very comprehensive solution, but it's also the most expensive, right? Not everyone can afford to reach out to an outsource agency to help them develop their product. So those are external options. How about an internal option, right? Hire a team member, um, which is probably the most organic option, but you need to really outline what's the equity, what's the salary, what's the position agreements, what's the perks. If they don't get any of that, what do they benefit from being a part of your team? Is it learning? Is it access? Is it recommendations? Because each person values different things. Some people don't want to be a part of a full-time team. They just want access to an experience, right? And so there's a lot of different ways to go about that, but understand there are pros and cons to every path that you take. But always be aware that you always have options. And I see a lot of founders get stuck where it's like, oh, if I can't find a freelancer, I'm stuck. If I can't um, afford to buy an agency, I'm stuck. If I can't hire someone to come in the team, I'm stuck. You're not stuck, right? And of course, for those who are starting solo, you can also just learn the basics of coding. So that way you learn um, by trial and error before you hire someone else, whether it's externally or internally to join your team. And so understand that when it comes to people mapping, the developer and targeting the person who's going to develop your app, your website, your product, that you need to really think through, you know, the options that you have available to you. Now let's think about the ecosystem. So back in the day, if you were trying to find a developer, it probably was really hard. Like you have to find the right people and you have to pay a lot of money, but the world is so different now. Now there's an entire ecosystem dedicated to helping you find whatever you need in terms of your tech needs. So know where to find, a fi uh, uh, know where to find the top talent. So sites like Upwork, Top, um, top Tall, um, uh, Elance, these are sites where you can find people um, or Amazon MTurk, like you can find people for very cheap to be able to just do a project for you. This is like the freelancer part. I was telling you again, if you need a quick, you know, tool, then fine, then go for it. And the thing is, a lot of times, sometimes these freelancers could be like, you know, on a retainer and you have them for a long time. But the point is, is knowing your options and that 
there are databases now committed to helping you find the right person. So that's one. Another site is also Fiverr. That's more graphic design, a lot of different options, but there's also technical developers that you can find on Fiverr as well. Second thing I will say to this point is take it slow. Start with temporary projects. Don't just hire a CTO to overall everything. I see a lot of people just say, based on one meeting, they say, okay, you're the, my chief technical uh, officer, let's go. Don't do that. Like, it's like, you know, dating someone. Like, you don't meet the first person you meet and say, like, hey, you know, we could get married now. You take time to, like, have experiences with that person and really see, do you work together? Because that person might be the best fit skill-wise. They have great skill sets, but they're probably not the best people to work with, right? And so you need to take a time. And one thing that I've done in the past is, like, let's do a three-month project together. Let's do a six-month project together. Let's just do this temporary project together. So that way you get to learn the person's character, their quirks, because all that, it's all about dealing with people, right? And really knowing, is this a learn term thing? Because I've had experience where I work with a lot of people from all over the world. I see patterns and signs immediately, and I could tell when someone's going to be a problem. And so sometimes like, look, it's a great thing that we were just at the project level. This is not really working too well. Let's part ways, but we can stay, stay friends, right? And just build those relationships because you never know you could engage with the person in the future again anyway. And then third thing I always say that it's not just about coding. It's also about program capacity. Not every developer has the same skill set. I've seen a lot of non-technical founders get stuck with this where they literally oh this person can code i'm all set some people are designers um, and they're into ux design some people are front-end developers some people are back-end developers full stack and what i mean by front-end versus back-end is it's like some people know how to design aesthetically like a website but might not be able to code an app everyone has different skill sets in the coding community and so it's important that you're aware of that and i suggest that you read articles about this so that way when you're hiring someone or engaging someone you don't come off as a complete novice, right? That you understand that there's different type of developers. I have a photo right here on the screen where there's a web designer, there's a web developer, there's a web SEO person, there's an online marketer. Each one of them have digital tech skills, but it's all different ways, okay? So another thing that I always still tell people, once you think of like, for example, who are you gonna target to build your product? What's the ecosystem or the tools or the platform we use to find a developer? Think about the cost. Like, you know, the cost of building the apps has gone massive. But I want to say to you guys that just because Google, Facebook, and them are spending millions of dollars on a budget for an app, it doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. So you can start with the very basics. And I always tell people when it comes to like ideating and think about these things, you know, when you're writing things down and talking to as many people, I want to like kind of include what we learned from the first session. Like, Think about like the phase of like breaking down the product. So the first phase is the alpha phase where don't think of all the perks and all the features of your product. So for example, let's say you have an app and it's helping people to find different travels, hotspots in a country, right? Maybe you want something that's connected to the social media. Maybe you want something where they can vote on different parts of the country. Maybe you want, but you don't have to have all those features. Think of the basic solution and it's off of that first. And as you get more feedback from people, you add to it. The perfect example of this is this GSC accelerator, right? When we first got started, we only did like a three-day program virtually for people. And people say like, look, we want it to be expanded to a week. And then we do that. And then people say, no, actually we want monthly meetups. And then we did that. As you know, we want to be able to meet in person too through our summits. And then we did that. So you don't know what the ecosystem wants until you really get out there. So do an alpha, then you transition to a beta where you add features from feedback. Then you take some feedback. Some of the feedback might be harsh, be humble, take in that feedback, get really good at getting feedback from people and then reiterate and release and keep going and go through that cycle of always iterating. We've been doing these accelerators for over four years now and we still feel like a startup, still learning every single year. And so it's very important that you learn those things and really try to optimize as much as you can each time. And so to give you a visual of what I meant, look at a car, for example, right? You see this car, the end product, of course you would love to like have a customer say, hey, let me just give you this, right? But you gotta start basically and sometimes, people take the minimal via product too far, which is why I have this screenshot of this funny series where if you're going to give someone a car, 
Don't give them a wheel and say, oh, it's a minimal viable product. Eventually you'll have a car. Okay, let me give you two wheels and then I'll give you a door and here's the car. Like that's just absolutely ridiculous. A minimal viable product is like, okay, the person wants a car, but maybe you can't provide a car. You could provide another mode of transportation. So maybe you give them a scooter. And maybe you give them a scooter with a handle. And then you transition, you give them a bike. And then you give them a motorcycle. And then you give them a car. Two different ways of looking at the same um, product development strategy, but thinking critically about your customer. All right. And so obviously there are muck-up trials, there's feedback, there's users. Make sure that you have testimonials. I've asked this before. How many of you have testimonials from, you know, feedback from your customers or people who are using your product and getting them to say, okay, maybe you could have this, maybe you have that, and get really good at just taking those points. And not every feedback you need to take in. I want to make that very clear. Feedback is great, but if you're taking every single feedback point, you won't be able to move forward. I'm really good at this sifting feedback. Every single day, I probably get hundreds of emails from different people as to how to do X, Y, Z from our summits, from my accelerators, from my company, from our products. But I'm really good with sifting through what is something relevant for me to do now and what is something to like parking lot or something to not do at all, right? So you'll get creative about managing feedback over time. And so now I want to take a pause and transition to how to build apps. And Christina mentioned this before, you know, there are different ways to build apps. And one thing I will say is the three ways I will say to build an app or build a website or anything like of the sort is you could build without code, right? With app maker platforms, you could build without code using WordPress. So it's like a web app or you could build with code. So I'm going to walk you through my journey as to how I was able to build my first app. The app is still running today. And it's a really great way for those of you who are non-technical, or even those of you who are technical, to not overthink the process and get something out there within a couple of days in an easy way. And so I'll start with who started like, or not only so much started, but who was really um, well known for pioneering the movement of like, building without code. Um, so there's a woman um, named Tara, I believe her name is, and she has a TED talk, you know, how to build apps without code. And she actually has like sessions and free workshops on this all the time. So I highly suggest that you watch her TED talk on YouTube for 15 minutes. It's a really great talk. And she goes over pretty much how to build an app without code. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through that. So let's start with building an app without code using app makers. So app makers are very, very popular. They're pretty much an app that you drag and drop, like kind of like how you would do a website or any type of phone app. And Google App Maker has one, iBuild App has one, Bubble is another one. And every year there's new competitors that come to the market to help you build an app. These are apps that literally not only helps you build the app, the, the aesthetics and the design within a day or within a week, but they also are able to publish to um to um android to android and pretty much all the light so it's really good to see that that you're able to pretty much like have um have that opportunity to be able to have an app maker help you with everything that you're doing so highly highly suggest that when it comes to these things that you really think through um looking at these app maker platforms some of them are free and some of them like are a basic monthly cost, like $5 a month, $10 a month. All depends on your budget. They range, but there are Mac app makers there available, right? So it's really, really cool um, to see that, that those things are available for people to use. A next thing to talk about um, when it comes to app makers is that sometimes it might be very hard to select. So when I recommend app maker software platforms, you're gonna get overwhelmed with all the options. So I highly suggest that you go to top10reviews.com. They pretty much showcase all the top apps and they can even tell you, okay, this is the best app for restaurants. This is the best app for startups and blockchain. This is the best apps for so-and-so. And they give you recommendations as to which ones to try. So that way you don't have to like be overwhelmed or find the right decision to build your company, right? The second way to build apps, I already shared with you the first one, you can build apps without code using app maker platforms. Another way to do that was with WordPress. WordPress is like a plugin to do websites. Um, it's a very popular one. It powers a lot of the websites around the world. And plugins are a great way to kind of test an idea and build a web app. I've done it before. And so there are millions of different 
pre-done theme so that way you don't have to build a website from um, scratch. And there's a great video um, on YouTube called Building an App with WordPress. And WP Beginner is also another website that I've used to build web apps online. And so right then there, for those of you on the call, you already have two great options to build your app immediately if you wanted to today as we speak. So really great resources for that. So to summarize, some of you might say, okay, which option should I take? Should I use an app maker or should I do WordPress? My advice for beginners is like outline what you want to build first. Spend a week <clears throat> researching the links that I just shared with you, like the app makers, the WordPress themes. Do the same process for each option and then make a decision on the best approach for you, right? And then see what works for you that way. So that way you can make a great decision. Now let's talk about the third option of building an app, which is how to build with code. Now, I actually learned how to code. It actually was a very enriching experience for me. And the first step I will say is a lot of times we feel alone when it comes to starting something new, but you're not alone. A lot of people have done it before you have learned. And so leverage your community and leverage the people around you to learn how to learn how to um, build an app. So the first thing I would say is read blogs about other people who've done it before you and get inspiration, resources, and tips. And not any type of blog. I researched like people like James Fenn. He wrote a 12 week um, process, how you learned how to um, um, code by himself in 12 weeks. Another person on Lifehacker learned how to code in eight weeks. I learned um, Life After Code Academy because I use Code Academy to use my uh, to learn how to code. There's so many different links and resources. I myself learned how to code within three to five weeks. Built my first website within a week, uh, three weeks. Built my first app within four weeks. And so there are different. And I I couldn't have done that if I didn't see the journey that other people have gone through to learn from and then do it myself. And then the second thing is. Research keywords from articles before you start to learn how to code or before you start coding in general, because you just never know, you know, what the information you need in order to do that. And so like learning basics, like, for example, like, um, like design mockups, testing, deployment, hosting, text editors, terminals, like these are terms that might be foreign to you now, but when you start to learn how to code, you need to know what this means, right? And so the first three steps I would say is read about what other people have done, research keywords like the ones I just shared with you before, and make sure you sign up for different free uh, meetup groups, forums and resources and networks so that way you can learn um, from other people communities as to how to really optimize. I mean, GSC, we are teaching you as much as we can, but I could tell that you guys are getting a lot of learning from the WhatsApp groups and just engaging with each other. That's the benefit of these communities. So those are the first three steps I would say before you start coding to go through so that way you can have a really robust foundation of resources and community around you to help you. The, then look for ways to learn how to code for free. So I've leveraged a lot of different um, online resources to do this. And so I'm like in love with, you know, um, different ways to learn how to code. So depending on your budget, you can learn how to code for free. You can learn how to code for cheap or you can learn how to code because you have the budget expensively. So obviously not everyone has $5,000 to $15,000 to pay for a bootcamp from a platform like General Assembly or the list of companies that I have right here on the links. Some of you, maybe you have the budget to learn how to code for $50 or less and one month.com, Code School, Treehouse, Udemy and Udacity. They all have online coding, uh, coding site sites uh, for $50 or less for you to learn how to code. And they are great platforms. I personally, I learned how to code for free. Um, so the sites I used was Code Academy, Free Code Camp, Code Words, Skillshare, YouTube was amazing. I used free um, courses from Coursera and edX. I joined, I joined a bunch of meetup groups in my community and I was pregnant at the time. So me and my big belly, we went all, I went all across New York to meet um, hackers who were learning how to code and coded with them. And so it was a great experience, got to meet tons of new people and really learn um, with other people teaching me. So it was a great experience for me. I was very happy to have done that and to really have had that opportunity um, to learn from other people who have done it before. And so definitely recommend that you do that. And I'm gonna say this to everyone, please stop making comments um, on um, the screen. Please be respectful to your fellow mates. 
Um, yeah. So going back to this, um, I'm going to make sure that I mute everyone again. And then that way we could get back to it. So yeah, so making sure that, you know, there are different ways to learn how to code. Um, and it's not that hard, right? And so definitely suggest that, you know, when it comes to building the strategy of learning how to code your first app or your first website, that don't overthink it, that it's quite all right to be able to do this um, by learning through the basics, okay? And so I also want to give you guys a point of inspiration now that I'm coming to conclusion with the second session is that everyone knows about Instagram and Instagram was made by two guys in eight weeks. They were actually uh, working full time when they learned. One of them learned how to code the basic app um, at night after work, built a prototype website, showed it to some of his friends, um, quit his job, and then got seed funding. And then he was able to hire someone to work with them. And then Instagram is what it is today. Now, obviously, not everyone's journey is going to be this way. But the reason why I bring this up is that your journey and your path and your future is in your hands. Like anything that's a barrier to you when it comes to building your company, whether it's like, how do I ideate around this? How do I build a business plan? How do I code a website? How do I code an app? It's all up to you. If you are in doubt, there's so many free resources like the ones I just shared to learn how to code, whether it's like learning to code through WordPress, learning to code with app makers. Like there are so many options as I'm flipping through these slides to show you that you can make anything happen if you put your mind to it. So always remember that. So I just want to make sure that I concluded with that point of inspiration, just letting you know that some of the biggest platforms that you're using today started with humble beginnings, started with someone saying like, let me learn the basics and get started. And time moves very fast when you're learning because you have a goal and you learn better when you have a goal at the end of the tunnel. Um, so I'll conclude here and say, Thank you so much for hearing the second session. And before I transition to the third session, which is pretty much how to legitimize your company, talk a little bit of basics about incorporation, how to register for credit, some basic things.